what a final we had. You couldn't have scripted what happened yesterday. You couldn't possibly have, have scripted it. Uh, it was, uh, for me, even more important than Messi winning and, and uh, finishing this arc, because we are unfortunately getting close to the finish now by lifting up the trophy. Even more important than that was the fact that this game was, was so breathtaking, probably the greatest of all World Cup finals when the big stars turn up. And it's a spectacle that uh, the global audience will never forget. Certainly will remember at least the 70 minute mark. We have discussed that a little bit this morning. Uh, many of us were expecting it to be Messi's final act in international football, like you've alluded to. But he said afterwards that he would like to continue for at least a little while and play as a world champion. How long do you think we can expect to see him in an Argentina shirt? Well, he clearly wants to play in, in Argentina in front of what have become, and this is an important part of the story, what have become his own people. Because until the Copa America of 2019 in Brazil, where Argentina were eliminated in the semifinals, but this team started to come together. Until that point, he was always seen by his own uh, compatriots as more Catalan than one of them. From that point, over the last three and a half years, and I think he's worked very consciously at this, he's tried to be more one of the group, more Argentine. And even the way that uh, he was swearing at Van Gaal and some of the Dutch players after the game in Argentine street speak was something that, uh, that, that his, his home people loved. So I think he would love to have the opportunity to play uh, in front of a, a crowd in Argentina, a kind of thank you game, a little bit like Pelé did after winning the World Cup in 1970. There are no competitive games now for Argentina until the middle of next year, the Copa America. Whether we'll still see him then, I don't know. Uh, the coach, Scaloni, he said uh, yesterday, we're going to leave a place open for him for the next World Cup in 2026. If he wants it, it's his. So we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, but I, the, the, I, you could see yesterday, he never wanted to leave the pitch. Why would you ever want that day to end? So he'll want to continue that vibe that he has with these players, at least in some friendly matches in front of his own his own public. Um, after that, we don't know how long he's uh, he's, he's going to keep on uh, in competitive games. Unfortunately, we're far far closer to the end than we are to the beginning. Yeah, it's interesting, Tim, that you spoke about him becoming more Argentine in that Dutch game. And he had a bit to say, particularly to Wout Weghorst, who's about four foot taller than him. But some would say he became a little bit more like Maradona that night. And it, it does seem a churlish to try and compare the two of them, but they at least both now have that ultimate team prize for their country. Yeah, and this is a question that I've been asking to Argentine journalists um, during the week. If Argentina win, how does he stand with, with Maradona? Now, there are obviously things that, that Maradona has that Messi can't have. You know, Maradona has that, you know, boy from the, the, the back streets, boy from the barrios, from the wrong side of the tracks. Um, he also has that combative nature, uh, making power feel uncomfortable. And the two goals that he scored against England, he was living out an Argentine fantasy there. That was something that couldn't be scripted. Messi will never have exactly that. But what he does have is, is the generational divide because... Uh, as time goes on, there are fewer people who remember Maradona from 86 and more people who remember Messi from, from yesterday. So uh, asking uh, Argentinian journalists about this, this they were saying, well, if, if Messi wins it, it's going to be 50-50, like choosing between your mum and your dad. <laughs> um, look, what has impressed you most about Argentina during this tournament, from that shaky start and that surprise loss to uh, Saudi Arabia to, to lifting the trophy? Well, th this is the story of, of the two Lionels because uh, the, the, the Scaloni story is just unbelievable. No, and he was appointed after the last World Cup on a caretaker basis uh, after never having taken charge of a senior team ever on the really on the sole basis that he was around and he was cheap. And I, rem I remember Maradona at the time saying, uh, you know, he's a nice lad, Scaloni, but he can't even direct traffic. You know, what are we doing letting him in charge of the national team? Have we all gone mad? And at that point, it was hard to disagree with Maradona. But uh, Scaloni has, has proved us all wrong. Uh, I think international tournaments, they have two components. There's the process, the build-up that takes place over a period of time, a prolonged period of time going into the tournaments where the group is formed. And then you get to the competition and it's like time speeded up. You have to react. Things work. Things don't work. Opponents change. You have to change your team. And in both of these aspects, Scaloni has done remarkably well. First, forming the group, getting Messi into the group in a way that had never happened with Argentina before. Secondly, 
reacting to that shock defeat against Saudi Arabia, which really made every game a final, and with maybe one or two exceptions, all of the little tactical tweaks that he's made have been successful. And what he did for yesterday's game, the final, I thought was was exceptional. There were many expecting, and he's got he, he he's got fear of France. You know, he's got a huge respect for France. He was. Um, the observer of Argentina's opponents in the last World Cup. And France were the one that really struck him. And winning the ball and being in a position to, to, to shoot in three or four seconds, he was scared of that. So there was a lot of speculation that he'd go to three centre-backs. Uh, he sold everyone a dummy to that because he didn't do that. Uh, he, he went with a, with a back four and brought in Di Maria from the start. Now, we didn't imagine that Di Maria would play wide left. We thought he played wide right against Teo Hernandez. Wide left... It meant that Argentina could cover the front line with a three, with Alvarez furiously pressing with Messi and Di Maria. Uh, they enlarged the area that the French midfield duo had to cover. And they were the first team in this tournament to turn Anton Griezmann, the midfielder, into a problem. He'd always been a solution for France in this tournament. Argentina turned him into a problem. So uh, both of the kind of tactical tweaks and the group forming I think the performance of this rookie coach, Scaloni, has been, for me, very, very impressive indeed. And obviously, Tim, you, you will understand that in England, we look at things often through a, a Premier League prism and two players who enhance their reputation, not just yesterday, but throughout the course of the tournament. Alexis McAllister of Brighton and uh, Aston Villa's Emi Martinez as well. Yeah, uh, Emiliano Martinez is absolutely vital to this team. It's been a long time since Argentina has had a world-class goalkeeper. You know, in Scaloni's first eight games in charge... They used seven different goalkeepers and not one of them was Martinez. He came into the team in the middle of last year, not particularly known back in Argentina because he went abroad very, very, very young. And he immediately sent out the message, I'm the man, I'm the one. Argentinians, they love their goalkeeper to be a big character. And we've really seen that side of Martinez, both in the fact that quite often he didn't have a lot to do. But the saves he had to make were huge saves. And then you get to the penalty shootouts. Now, we saw this last year in the Copa America. And winning the Copa America last year has been a vital stepping stone. If they hadn't have won the Copa America last year, it was their first senior title in 28 years. I don't think they'd have won the World Cup. But uh, the semi-final against Colombia went to penalties. And then you saw Martinez in all his glory, all the trash talking, all the efforts to put off the Colombian penalty takers, it worked. And we saw the same thing again during the World Cup. So uh, Martinez is, 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 is already an immortal in Argentine football. And McAllister solved a problem for them because it was a real blow for them to lose uh, Giovanni Lo Celso on the eve of the tournament. He was a vital part of the midfield and he was a, a key supply line for Messi. And, and uh, they made a few attempts to try and replace him. In the end, it was Alexis McAllister who stood up and came in and did exceptionally well. So uh, he, he's an immortal as well, although not quite yet at the heights of Emiliano Martinez. There'll, there'll probably be statues being built in Argentina at this minute to Emiliano Martinez. I think there likely will be. Uh, Tim, brilliant to talk to you this morning. Thank you very much for your time on Good Morning Sports fans. My pleasure. Thank you.